this is a side of epilepsy that a lot of people don't want to talk about. I mean, talk, you know, encouraging people to talk about the fact that they have epilepsy is one thing, but to also talk about the fact that uh, epilepsy can kill is, uh, is a whole other thing, and it's unfortunately a big part of our community and the possibility. I mean, let's just, let's just talk right here. Please introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Dr. Joe Servan over at Mayo Clinic. Okay. I'm Cindy Wright, the director of the Epilepsy Foundation SUDEP Institute. So SUDEP, tell me if I'm wrong, sudden unexpected death due to epilepsy. Correct. Okay. So is that just in your sleep? When can that happen? When can it not? Like if somebody, um, like Kevin, we did the movie, you know, yeah. Kevin's Pyramids. I mean, that's terribly tragic. Is that unexpected? I mean, is that part of SUDEP? Yeah, uh, SUDEP is uh, when death occurs uh, really during a seizure. That might be during sleep. It could be potentially when you're awake, but it's really any time it occurs during a seizure. And what causes it, that's what people are trying to figure out at this time. There's a, there's a, um, I once had a conversation at dinner with a doctor, and, I, and he said, you know what, people, parents don't want to know about SUDEP. They don't want to know about it. They just don't want to know that it's a possibility. And I said, what are you talking about? As a parent, I want to know everything that I can possibly know. And he said, well, when it happens, even in a hospital setting, the heart can just stop. Like the brain has told the electronic signal to not go to the heart. It's terrible. And yet they say, even in a hospital, they can't revive the patient sometimes. But even that, I would want to know, as tragic and terrible as that is, I, want to, I just want to know as a parent that that's a possibility of happening. Um, right. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. yeah. So I think a, a lot of doctors used to say that people didn't want to know because it would cause fear and anxiety, and because we don't yet know the cause of SUDEP, that there was nothing they could do about it. So why cause this fear? Right. The reality is, is that we think in many cases SUDEP can be prevented, and. Also, when people know about this risk, they can do everything they can to prevent it, to reduce so their risk. So explain that. How, if you don't know, if it's unexpected, and how, do you, how can you stop something that you don't know is going to happen? So what we do know is that the leading cause of SUDEP is having convulsive or tonic-clonic seizures. Okay. So the number one thing you can do to prevent the risk of SUDEP is to have as few seizures as possible. So that is complying with your medication, it is you know, getting good night's rest, it's not drinking a lot of alcohol, whatever your seizure triggers are, mm -hmm. it's making sure you do everything you can to decrease those. And it's also- But that's the case, that's the case just in life, I mean. It is, but some people might get a little bit more relaxed. Well, it's another seizure. Oh, for sure. But one seizure could be one too many. So I think what people may not understand is SUDEP happens to one in 1,000 people with epilepsy. And if you have uncontrolled seizures, the risk is one in 150. So it's not insignificant. Yeah, no, that's true. I think you yeah. want to add? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the bottom line is that that difference between uncontrolled versus the not controlled is huge. And that's why taking every possible advantage to do what you can to stop it. I know s it's scary when you start talking stuff like surgery or, or other options, but if that's the path, this could save your life. Yeah, I mean, Jake, Jake had brain surgery. Um, it, it's, he was treated for five years, and we were told that his seizures were generalized. So if for people that don't understand that, it's, just, it's coming from everywhere in the brain. It's not a, there's not a spot, a hot spot. Like there's not a tumor or there's not scar tissue or anywhere they can go in and repair or do anything. This is what we were told. Then over the course of the five years, we got him tested at the different place, and then they, they discovered that, yes, it, it's coming from a hot spot. There's a zone where it's, it's actually starting and, and firing so fast that you know, there were tests done. But we, I, you know, people say, oh, when they hear about it right away, they're like, oh, su is surgery something? It's, it's really kind of the last, one of the last resorts is surgery. So uh, my wife and I, Elizabeth and I, don't feel like we did anything wrong. We did everything we could for five years, right. the normal path, and then got to surgery. Surgery happened to help Jake, but it, do it didn't uh, cure him by any means. He still ha has seizures and breakthrough seizures, you know, very, 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 very infrequently, thank God. But um, it's something that we're trying all the time. You know, we're always right. looking for something to decrease the medication that he's taking. It's just common sense stuff, you know, right. we're trying. But, but like you said, don't stop running. 
do everything you possibly can to right. get them under control. That's yeah. the number one thing. So right? one seizure is one too many. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's also empowering for families that they can they consider having a seizure alert device so they can be with their loved one. And what a lot of families have said to me, because you know, we support families who are bereaved by epilepsy, and what they've said to me is if I had known more, I would have done more, and I would have talked to my child more, or yeah. I would have told their roommates, and I wouldn't have let them have a dorm room by themselves so that it was alone. And you know, we, d we don't want them to live in fear and constantly worrying about it, but there is something to be said that if you're available after someone's had a seizure, particularly at night in bed, mm -hmm. and you can reposition them and you know, make sure they're alert and they're awake, you know, that, that can make a difference. Yeah. And other families, this is sad and it's hard, but you know, just knowing that they were there with their loved one mm -hmm. in those final moments can matter.